There have been numerous crises over the years, many of which central banks intervened and posed as the savior. Each time the crisis occurs, it becomes more intense, more exaggerated, and more prolonged. The effects are seemingly everlasting in this current recovery. Over a decade after the financial crisis first hit, we are still seeing the global monetary and fiscal stimulus measures required in order to keep the financial system afloat. No admissions from the central banks, no admissions from the politicians, and no admissions from the worthless mainstream media. But it really doesn't matter, the central banks will save the day. But how? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at very important issues. We're going to talk about the central bankers being trapped. They're trapped in a corner, and this is on the surface level. If we go a level deeper, obviously, much, much different story. But a lot of people are not ready for that information. So we'll just cover it on the surface level. I'm going to show you what has been happening with the S&P 500. We're going to look at the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. We're going to talk about the ECB. I'm going to show you several economic indicators, a lot to get into today. The video. I posted yesterday was one of the worst performing videos I have ever done. Fantastic. I actually laughed when I saw the amount of views that it had. Let's see what this one gets. We can try and see how terrible the views get. Let's see the S&P 500 turning positive after the WHO said, don't worry, everything's totally fine. This is actually a quote. Here we go. It's a bit too early to consider this event is a public health emergency of international concern. Stock market goes up from there. That's what a joke this is. They could just output a statement even though the numbers are showing it's going higher and higher. The market doesn't care. The Federal Reserve will just come around and drop some Fed money on the people and that's going to fix the problem, right? Is that the way it works? Of course not. The central banks are talking about all sorts of nonsense recently and I think that it is just beyond the joke now. It really is sad. This is the Fed repos just showing you again more and more requirements for the Federal Reserve to be there every single day. I think the last calculation was something like $74 billion in a day. We've seen that all before. Now, once again, we've had this anomaly occurring, suddenly not becoming an anomaly at all. This is the second time within a three-week period that the balance sheet actually went down. But this, of course, all depends on when their current assets are maturing. So it shouldn't necessarily match up week to week to week but in general we see the trend this right here though is interesting because it happened twice within a three-week period i just want to show you the way it is i'm telling you as i see it as i find it balance sheet went down slightly the trajectory of course is still up just like they have the FOMC meetings, the ECB does the same thing, and they had their new statement put out. They had the press conference. I actually watched the press conference. It was unbelievably boring. Over an hour long, I saved the time. I saved the trouble. But Christine Lagarde did say something very interesting there, but just wanted to cover very quickly. I know that the font is really small, but let me just cover the few points. They left the interest rates at the same level that they were before, as well as the fact that they are still going to be printing $20 billion again per month. Everything status quo, everything stays the same. Christine Lagarde had to get up there, read the statement. It was all cookie cutter, nothing fun about that. Then they got into the question and answer and I couldn't believe it because they had so many of these reporters, worthless reporters as far as I'm concerned, at least what they showed me in this case, question after question after question related to the climate. What are you going to do about the climate? How are you guys working on the climate? This is ridiculous. It's a central bank and you're only fueling this, which I would consider nonsense that the central bank is going to have anything to do with the climate at all. Whether you stand on one side of the issue or not, the central bank should not be involved at all. Whether that's the ECB, the Federal Reserve, or any others, printing money, reducing interest rates is not going to fix the crisis. And this goes for any that you may have. Central banks need to stop intervening in everything that affects our our lives. It is unbelievable. But time and time again, we see this repeating over and over and over. Christine Lagarde had this to say, we have had low rates for a period of time and that hampers our ability to respond in case of exogenous shock. Essentially saying we have no ability to respond next time around. We've brought interest rates down to the bottom. There's nowhere left to go. And we've been printing money as you see it right now, 20 billion 
billion per month. They've gone a lot higher than that. It had no effect. 80 billion didn't do anything. 20 billion certainly isn't going to do it. They cannot fix the next crisis. I think we need to stress this point. This happens to be the ECB, but the Federal Reserve is in the same situation. These central banks are still today, right now, over a decade later, doing the same activities that were being done back then. Didn't fix the crisis, didn't fix the issues. We still have massive holes, massive cracks in the foundation, and they're out there trying to do the exact same thing and get a different result, and we know the definition of that. This is just a comparison between the Russell 3000 and U.S. corporate profits. I think it's pretty clear which one is which if you can't see the labels. But you can see that the Russell 3000 has moved upward significantly and the corporate profits have been flat for such a long period. They've basically gone nowhere for years. Now we have the introduction of QE1, QE2, and QE3 along with the ECEB's asset purchase program. That pushes stocks upward. We know that already. They may not necessarily have to buy the shares themselves, but as a result, this pushes up asset prices, whether that is real estate, whether that is stocks and so on. However, it doesn't fix the corporate profit problem. And that is an issue when we look at this on a deeper level, even just one level deeper. The black line is the US profit share as a percentage of the GDP, and the red line is the S&P 500 operating margin. The profits have not been doing well clearly when you look at this over the last several years, in fact. We are watching time and time again where these indicators are piling up, and unfortunately, there's nothing that a central bank can do to fix this. They've already brought interest rates down to the bottom, what else do they have? Well, of course, they could start buying the shares themselves. And in some cases, some central banks have done that, but in general, they haven't gone to that level. Conference Board Leading Economic Indicators Index year over year showing us the weakest level since 2010. Of course, this is ignored by the mainstream. They're never going to touch on it. You could see it looking at it on a nominal basis. Of course, when we tend to get these stagnant moments, as you see the circled areas, it generally leads to a recession. There are times in which things move sideways for a bit and then it continues upward. So we have to see in the coming months where this goes. It's not a very good thing to see these indicators piling up all looking bad when you see the freight and EMIs and so many others real economic indicators stagnating and yet the stock market's going up. You want to see corrections that is healthy and unfortunately not being allowed to actually happen. International cargo on the Great Lakes declined by 7% last year. To give more data in here, but essentially what we're looking at is this persistent weakness with any form of freight, any form of moving goods from place to place. And I have shown you so many different areas where this weakness has persisted. I had this out of order, but I just wanted to also include the actual conference board website and their data right here. It's plotted on that chart, but this is the actual source itself. I always want to include the sources directly for you and include them. If you go to the description at the bottom, there's a thing that says sources. You can get them for yourself. Every single link I've ever used is in the description. 23andMe lays off 100 people as DNA test sales declines. CEO says that she was surprised to see the market turn. Okay, that's just one company though. Papyrus closing all of their stores in the coming weeks. 254 store closings just added to the list. Why not? They're still going to be in business though because their cards are available in different locations, different stores that will carry their products, but the stores themselves will close down and I'm sure most of the staff will be gone. Express closing 91 stores amid slumping sales, yet more retail just getting absolutely destroyed. Texas Instruments to close two Dallas area factories in the next three to five years. And apparently 500 employees at each facility. The reason I'm showing you this, you can see that it's different types of companies. It's not just department stores, for instance. It's all types of industries. And clearly there's a problem because freight that's behind it is also looking weak. That's the whole point. That's why I always talk about different types of freight. So key to look at that. 
And then last but not least, dailyjobcuts.com, a website I'm always looking at because they're keeping track better than I can. On the left-hand side, they give you the layoffs. In the middle, the bankruptcies. And on the right-hand side, closings. There's so many in here. I'm not going to just list them off for you. But like I said, it's a website I check frequently. And I thought I would just add this in here. 110 million consumers could see their credit scores change under the new FICO scoring. So I read this and I wanted to find out if just like in the past two instances that I have noted on this channel in the last couple of years, credit scores went up because they eliminated certain factors from people's credit scores, giving them a boost. As a result, they can borrow more money. That's the whole point and purpose to that. In this case here, it could go up or it could go down. I think ultimately the goal here is to get people to borrow with a maximum amount of money. They say that half will go up, half will go down. It's not a big factor. I think it was something like 20 points. But the point is there, when people's credit score goes up, they're going to be able to borrow more money at a cheaper rate. If it goes down, it becomes more expensive because they're considered to be more of a risk. Regardless, debt is rising. Doesn't matter if they are a subprime borrower or a prime borrower. We see it on all cases and it's never going to stop. Student debt is a monster in the closet that nobody wants to acknowledge. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. This channel is absolutely hemorrhaging, just like the economy around the world. But if you want to support me, you can give me a thumbs up. That's all you got to do. If you're interested in learning about how to make money online, if you want to know about e-commerce, clearly it's growing. I teach you everything for free. That's right, for free. Unlike the $1,000 plus courses that are available, this one's free. It's the AmazonGPS.com. Maybe I'm old school, but I like to read a book or two. And these two right here are the ones that I wish I read first. I wish these two books existed when I first began reading. I wish this was taught to me in high school. Really, truly, I do. I set out to create these two books. They fit into each other like a lock and key. They teach you what you need to know about the financial system, about money, about the asset classes. And it doesn't matter what age you are. It's going to break it all down really, really simply for you. Check them out. Link in description. If you want the audiobook, moneygps.com. Wait a second. Were you one of those that didn't watch yesterday's video? I got a jam-packed episode sitting right here. Click on it and I'll see you there.